Hello everyone, welcome back to the Aspen Tech channel. And as you know that we are focusing these days on the chemical reaction engineering theoretical aspects. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number two. I am your course instructor, Dr. Muhammad Harisumani. So in today's lecture, we will resume from the chapter number one. In the previous lecture, we have studied about the chemical species, chemical identity, rate of reaction. And in this lecture, we will start with the general mole balance and its derivation, then the different type of processes and corresponding reactors and derivation of mole balance equation for the batch reactor. So starting with the general mole balance, let's assume a system volume of V in which there is a flow rate, or there is a feed whose flow rate is Fj node. The J is the species, not means the inlet and F means the flow rate. So flow rate of the species J at the inlet of this system volume. G of J represents the generation and the F of J represents the exit flow rate. So this is the inlet, this is the outlet, G represents the generation in the system. Accordingly, molar flow rate of species J in minus molar flow rate of species J out plus molar rate generation of species J and that is equal to molar rate accumulation of species J. So accordingly, the flow rate in FJ naught, the unit is mole per time minus molar flow rate of species j out f of j unit is mole per time generation g of j mole per time and that is equal to the accumulation obviously for the steady state systems we know that there is no accumulation in the system while for unsteady state systems there is accumulation in the system now if the system is spatially uniform the spatially uniform means if you look back here and if i divide this into 100 segments then at all these 100 segments the properties remain the same. So accordingly, if the properties remain the same, or we can say that it is specially uniform, so accordingly G of J will become R of J, the rate of reaction or the rate multiplied by the volume. Obviously, the final unit will be mole per time. But if it is not specially uniform, like you can see here, that at point 1, like delta V1, the rate of reaction is Rj1. At point 2, the rate of reaction is rj2 so accordingly g the generation is equal to rate multiplied by that volume of the segment then g of 2 is equal to r of 2 into delta v2 obviously we are representing j but you can say a b c d and some species like that so accordingly what it will become g of j is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n r of j i delta v i where i represents from 1 to n which represents the compartments or the components in the system or the distribution so applying the limit and we'll finally get this relation integral r of j into d of p so substituting the value of g of j in the first equation which we studied in the system which is here g of j so we know fj naught we know fj and in place of g of j we get if we assume the species a then in minus out plus generation is equal to accumulation fa naught minus f of a plus g of j is replaced by r of a into d of a integral is equal to dna over dt so this is the general mole balance equation which we will use once we are deriving the mole balance equations for batch reactor cstr pfr and pbr so after that we will move to the different types of processes and reactors in the system the first process is the batch process and including which is a batch reactor then the continuous process which includes three types of reactors continuous steel tank reactor tubular reactor and packed bed reactor obviously we will study the characteristics of each of the reactor once we will move to that particular reactor but as of now the major classification is two batch and continuous among which there are four reactors batch include batch reactor while continuous includes cstr pfr or tubular reactor and pbr now if you see the batch reactor this is the pictorial representation of it that the feed is placed in this reactor as you can see here the feed is stopped as you can see here and then this mixer starts as working the reaction takes place in the system and finally after some time when the product is formed it is withdrawn from the system so it is an unsteady state system because with time there are changes in the system but it is a well mixed system because of this agitator in the system. Accordingly, we can say that it is specially uniform, but it is unsteady state, or it is not specially uniform with respect to time. 
तो रिएक्टेंट्स आर प्लेस इन द रिएक्टर एंड द रिएक्शन इज अलाउड टू प्रोसीड फॉर सम अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम इट्स अ क्लोज सिस्टम इट इज नॉट एन ओपन सिस्टम नो एडिशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट्स और रिमूवल ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ड्यूरिंग द रिएक्शन दिस इज अनस्टडी स्टेट सिस्टम द कंडीशंस आर अनस्टडी स्टेट दैट देयर इज चेंज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम बट इफ यू लुक एट सम पॉइंट इन द सिस्टम एट पर्टिकुलर टाइम द कंडीशंस विल रिमेन द सेम वेसल इज परफेक्टली मिक्स्ड कंसंट्रेशन एंड टेंपरेचर आर स्पेशली कांस्टेंट बट नॉट कांस्टेंट इन टाइम सो दिस इज शोस दैट द सिस्टम इज एन अनस्टडी स्टेट बट स्पेशली यूनिफॉर्म टॉकिंग अबाउट द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द सिस्टम इट्स अ क्लोज सिस्टम and the assumption is constant density well mixed concentration temperature are specially uniform the phases to operate gas typically for liquid phase reactions the applications include small scale production new process development obtain kinetic data for the reactor scale up and we will see once we go to the isothermal design in chapter number 5 that we are using batch reactor to get the value of the reaction rate constant but we will see it in later stage advantages include high conversion per unit volume for one pass flexibility of operation and easy to clean the system because obviously it is not a continuous process it's a batch process may be operated for 6 hours 8 hours and then afterwards you can clean it unlike the other systems disadvantages include higher operational cost obviously and product quality could vary from batch to batch so applying the mole balance on the batch reactor first we will write the general mole balance equation which is f of a not a represents the limiting reactant or the p to the system minus f of a plus integral r of a into d of v is equal to dna over dt now there is no continuous feed to the system mole per time so it's a closed system so accordingly f a not and f a will be equal to 0 the system is well mixed we have said that it is specially uniform so what it will happen that this integral at this derivative will cancel out and we will finally get integral r a dv is equal to r a into v so these two terms are cancel out this has become r a v so r a v is equal to dna over dt and taking t at one side d of t here and r of a into v here we get dna over r a v is equal to d of t now applying the limits and integrating it what are the limits at time t is equal to 0 number of moles of a is equal to initial number of moles which is na not while at time some time t or the at the end of the system na is equal to na1 obviously these number of moles have consumed and these product which is b in this case has produced in the system so accordingly we get t is equal to integral na not to na1 dna over ra into v however if you remember in our previous lecture that this ra represents the rate of disappearance because it is for the reactant if here it was a product then it would be positive but now we have to make it negative as well so what we will do multiply and divide it by negative once we divide it it will be negative for multiplication these limits will reverse as we know the simple principle of mathematics so what it will become t is equal to integral na1 and na0 will switch their places and accordingly it will be from na1 to na0 dna over minus ra into v so this is the general mole balance equation for the batch reactor which we will be using in our practices and finally if you see here a goes to b dna over dt is equal to ra into v this is the equation as you can see that with time the number of moles of a are decreasing while the number of moles of b are increasing in the system which is obviously understood that reactors will disappear and products will form in the system if there would have been a and b then both a and b will disappear if these two are reactants and if there are c and d that c and d will produced in the system so that's it from this lecture thank you so much in the next lecture we will derive mole balance equation for cstr pfr pbr after studying their relevant characteristics so that's it from this video thank you so much please do watch like share the video and subscribe to the channel also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel Till then it's goodbye stay tuned for more exciting videos